We've missed you. Pour yourself a drink, pop some popcorn, throw those wings in the oven, grab any snack. It is time to catch up over pre-show cocktails, or tea, or water, or whatever. Before the curtain rises at our favorite place, the Stratford Festival. Let's gab about the shows of the 2021 season, the plays, and the cabarets. This, this is show Starters with Alexis and Ijoma. Cheers! Cheers. Welcome to Show Starters. My name is Ijoma Imasawam. I come to you today from the ancestral lands of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, the Wendat, and the Neutrals. I am here in this beautiful land because of the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant and Treaty 29. I am so pleased to be joined by Jess Carmichael. Hi. Where are you joining us from today? Um, I am coming to you all the way from my apartment in Mulian, Jajage, Montreal, uh, when the Ganyagahaga Nation are the custodians of the lands and waters on which I gather with my daughter here in our apartment on Zoom with you. <laughs> Wonderful. And also joining us today is Sophie Tang. Hello, Sophie. Hi, guys. Um, I am currently in Vancouver, uh, the land of Coast Salish people, Musqueam, Squamish, and stay with his nations. Sophie Tang is an award-winning designer from Vancouver. Um, most recently, she was part of a show which she has said is one of her greatest theater achievements to date, a successful pandemic shift with um, the favored Christmas musical East Van Panto, Panto Come Home, which became an online streaming event consisting of multiple cameras throughout the entire theater. That's incredible. Um, the Res Sisters marks her first season designing at the Stratford Festival. And the director, Jess Carmichael. Jessica is a director, actor, playwright, creator, dramaturg. She does everything. She's incredible. She is a theater professor at Concordia University. She has two degrees, an MFA. She has been an artistic director, an artistic uh, associate, and now a tenured professor. Wow, that's so incredible. I am utterly inspired by everything you've accomplished. Um, 2020 would have marked her directorial debut with the Res Sisters, and I'm very happy that you are back directing the show again this year. Welcome, welcome so to both of you. Um, Thanks so much for your kind welcome. Oh, and um, so, we are coming to you virtually right now, but please imagine that Jess, Sophie, and I have our coffees and London fogs in hand, and we are surrounded by the Avon River soundscape on um, Tom Patterson Island to talk about this incredible work, this Dora award-winning play, The Red Sisters by Thompson Highway. It is a moving story, um, mystical and familiar about the dreams, loves, longing, strength, resilience of seven women uh, that live on the res. Um, thank you, welcome to both of you. It's so such a pleasure to, to see you and talk with you. Um, now this production was supposed to be in 2020 um, and now you are pivoting a bit to 2021. How does it feel to be returning um, to the production again this season? It definitely feels um, resonant, for sure, um, and it feels, uh, I think we've had some really great design conversations around how uh, we the play has deepened for us in terms of what we, what our hunches were regarding the text uh, and how we've built the language aesthetically um, and otherwise around uh, the play and what we're doing, our choices we're making, and, and so, um, you know, you don't want to capitalize on what's happened in the pandemic, which is, you know, truly devastating, but um, art often um, helps us kind of understand ourselves or, or see parallels and, and find ways to kind of companion ourselves in difficult times. And this play is one such play. Um, so it's pretty special to come back together and with almost the same team assembled um, with some little adjustments that needed to be make, made, obviously, but it's, it's good. <laughs> okay, yeah, I, I actually feel 
more ready in a sense because of it was my first season and I had not met Jess before. We had this workshop in 2019, December, and we had a very long talk in the airport <laughs> at the end of the workshop. Yeah. And I feel like we connected. And then now that we have all this extra time, I have not been like, I did not stop thinking about this show, like in terms of the concept. And um, we had like connections all through this time and um, now we're back together again and I really think uh, we are just more ready in a sense. It's true hey like that from that that airport to like all the little emails sometimes Sophie, Sophie sent me email saying I really understand things in a different way from this this thing that you said or that I jumped on and, and you know that Sophie kind of related to just kind of emotional when you think about it um, and then of course we discovered that we were Gemini's not that that really truly matters, but that we're we're we're, we're almost a, a little team of a creative team of Gemini's coming together. So we've got that kind of yeah. Just cause uh, our um, gem meetings, Gemini lines. <laughs> we feed off of each other's um, energies and like just would we just jump around all over the place and she would throw out an idea and then we'll jump on that and then we'll build on top of that and I'm able to follow her journey and jump here and there and then. Yeah, it, it was, yeah, it's been fun. Wonderful. I'd love to um, kind of dive into the, the play a little bit now. And um, when I was reading it, it really called to the complexities for me of relationships, specifically female relationships. Uh, you know, there are seven women uh, in this in this wonderful play. Um, and speaking from personal experience um, and the, the pandemic, um, female relationships are very complicated. And um, I think that this pandemic has highlighted the importance of female relationships and this complication um, and the, the sisterhood that is, is really relevant to this play. Um, the women seem to have a bond both through blood and also through their proximity of where they live. And you kind of, you know, you build relationships with the women that are around you. Um, I'd love to kind of start off talking about the role of sisterhood and companion companionship throughout the play. Yeah, I mean, it's such a important point that you bring up in terms of like what's particularly resonant um, and worth like examining or re-examining um, from Thompson's world, um, that notion of sisterhood or like the complexity of, of, of community versus individual and how we how do we consider living our lives um, together in meaningful ways? Like what is community development truly? Um, and further to that, like the, the responsibility that we have for ourselves and our communities, like what are our obligations and um, what are our limitations and can we see past those? Um, and this play sort of certainly, um, like it brings up those, those particular questions quite deeply um, in ways that aren't always articulated uh, by the women um, overtly, but, mm -hmm. but certainly in a complicated way as one has when you know someone so well um, and you're going through something of a particular, a particular hardship um, in, a, in a parallel way. Um, you, there's something there that Thompson's sort of um, tweaking out for us in terms of that question of, so what does this truly mean? Especially when we're faced with crossroads in our lives um, or truly um, life altering events um, that are going to change us and change our relationship to as we know it. A point in the play um, when Pelagia and Philomena are, are speaking really lends itself to Thompson's ability to like create these stories and to to give voice to these women in a way that like we communicate without communicating. Um, mm -hmm. Can you speak a little bit to that? Of course, yeah. I was, yeah, when you were kind of prepping for this conversation, um, I was sharing that, like, I was, you know, I'm always thinking about the play, like Sophie, and I think I was just in the washroom brushing my teeth. And I was like, oh, that scene with Palaisha and Philomena. There's two, there's, I mean, there's many, but there's two, one in the middle of the play, um, without giving too much away, but Philomena has this, like, beautiful kind of, uh, speech to her sister about some choices that she's made um, and uh, a situation with a child that's no longer in her life. And she thinks she might, maybe she'll go after it. If anyone knows the story after this child, I mean, if anyone knows the story, they're on their way to the biggest bingo in the world. And her sister, Pelagia says, I hope you win, which is beautiful. You know, it's all she needs to say. 
Mm -hmm. But then at the end of the play, um, Philomena may have come across some money um, in the bingo game. And, uh, and yet she has made a different choice than to pursue going after her child. And as she has a speech again about this and what she's done with the money, she slowly, as she's watching Elijah's face, receive um, kind of her experience about the bingo and her spoils, her winnings. She starts to stop talking because she's looking at her sister's face and Thompson's written this beautiful stage direction. It's very specific, says, um, I think it's something like it's, it's uh, her sister looks at her with, with contempt or something to that degree. And she stops talking and then she leaves the stage. There's something about that, that particular moment that sort of dawned on me and went, oh, right. Yeah, because uh, not only the, there's no words that need to be said here, but the words that need to be conveyed in this moment um, are so are so painful um, that a look is more more striking and more important. And they know each other so well that that's all that Pelagia needs to do for her sister to go away, hopefully, and think about what she's talking about. Um, and it's, it's not with like, there's some judgment there, but it's not, it's, it's complicated, um, between the two of them in that regard. And hopefully we'll be able to capture that. <laughs> I'm yeah. excited to talk with, um, with Jan and Tracy about it and see what they think about these, the, the choices that are made. And when we make a different choice and someone who knows us very well, um, sees us make a different choice than we thought was going to happen, um, what that reaction can do and how it can, uh, dissemble a relationship. Mm-hmm. It's their relationship's quite, quite beautiful. And I, it makes me think of like, that's near the end of the play. And it makes me think of the beginning of the play, you know, and there's also a, a big theme of, of longing and, and wanting to uh, looking out and, and wanting to leave and what keeps you where you are and what, what um, desires you see outside of yourself. Um, but I, I, I'm thinking of that first couple of lines too, between the two of them where, um, Pelagia is like, I, I want to leave. I'm going to leave. And um, her sister just kind of very simply says, you know, you're going to be here beside me forever. And it's that it's that relationship of sisters to be able to, you know, in one breath, say like, or not even in a, in, in a, in a, in a look, give contempt or, or show contempt or show uh, a feeling, but then also know that you're going to, like, this is your companion for life. Yes, you'll, no matter what, they're going to see each other tomorrow. Yeah. They're not going to not see each other the next day. I mean, that's the thing yeah. there. You know, that's the thing that we get to grapple with through the course of the play because Thompson's done a really beautiful job in a very short work, in fact, um, and we're going to do it without intermission. Um, so it feels like it's going to, it's just, it, it moves, right? And yet throughout that, we meet these characters and we get to know them really intimately. Like what you're talking about at the top of the piece, like he has that line where, uh, Philomena says to Pelagia, ah, me, you'll never leave. Your poop's on this reserve, right? And so the way his phrases allow us to uh, get history and, and meaning and character um, and, and some of the stage directions that aren't, you know, written down by stage manager, but are in fact from Thompson's own, you know, you can tell the difference between something that's like a staging, which you might be able to ignore, or something that's very character specific. And those are the things that, you know, we look to um, in the script is like, okay, well, what's, yeah, what's the essence that Thompson's trying to tell us here in this poetical line of stage direction that is in fact about uh, character development. Um, and it's peppered throughout the play, uh, which is super exciting to, to uh, kind of get into. And then hopefully the audience, if we do a good job, will be able to uh, go away and be like, yeah, so that's complicated, but they're going to see each other tomorrow. Huh? They're going to have to keep working at that. Yeah, it really makes me think of, um, or it like kind of gives encouragement to like, I feel like he's kind of saying like, even in the hardest of times, and even in the most tragic of times in your relationships, don't give up on those people that are close to you. Yes, and, and, and uh, perhaps stay open as well. Like, how do you stay open yeah. to them? How do you, how do you do that with grace and humility and like, love, real love, which they have for each other? Sometimes they do it by hurting each other, right? Yeah. Like we love each other the most. And, and there's been, you know, sometimes there's criticism around the play because the women are, are um, harsh with each other. You know, there's some, there's some difficult language in the piece uh, in the way that they, we might even think that they're tearing each other down, um, but we sometimes hurt the ones we love. 
especially when when we're going through difficult times together and things that we don't we don't want to even name um they're too hard to name you know mm -hmm. um and so that's what's beautiful about this piece is like yes uh ho hopefully like we're going to work on this relationship and what's great is it's not tidy like like real life <laughs> like relationships some yeah. some of them some of them some of them are are gonna work out a little better than others um in the days to come after the play the play is done uh, and in our imaginations we imagine we're next yeah it's beautiful can you speak a little bit to um your how how the, specifically for the res sisters um how it, any of your design elements might have changed or um your inspirations like have you had any like big changes in terms of your inspiration because of of COVID-19 like I mean I know that there's physical limitations and barriers kind of set put in place um how has that um encouraged you or caused you to kind of shift your focus in terms of as a designer and think outside the box when it comes to this production specifically mm -hmm. I think um before COVID we would have designed a show that's somewhat complete for the actors to act in i would say um that's how usually shows are done like the set is decided before rehearsal even starts and they are provided with this playground and they go and do their work inside but this time i think we're really working on the collaboration part of it i don't think i am the only set designer or lighting designer in the show we are providing them with a idea a starting point and we're inviting the actors to make offers to complete the design with us so it's not only mine um, and in terms of um there are some restrictions because of covid but we were able to really incorporate it into the show and again we just gave them a starting point and we will just see where that goes um, in rehearsal we're really going with the flow here I, I love that. I love that collaborative idea of the show and the the design behind it. It makes me think of too, like the one of the big parts of this show, which I don't want to give away, but is the bingo, right? The the world's biggest bingo. Um, and it, it makes me think of the agency with which these women all work towards one goal. Um, you know, when they're doing all of their fundraising, um, it ties into that idea of like creating a world for them that they can live in that they have some sort of control or agency over does that does that kind of peak anything like am i <laughs> kind of weeding down down a kind of idea that you both are kind of on yeah yeah definitely yeah the fundraiser aspect like so you said is going to be very collaborative you know in the first few days of rehearsal if we're able to be in person things might shift um but we're gonna what we call like i've got it in the schedule to workshop some of that particular scenes and some of the things that Sophie and I have been in discussion with collaboratively, um, and she's got great ideas, are, are, um, are things that we're gonna offer to the actors. Um, and I've created sort of a composition idea um, along with what Sophie's responded to, and we're gonna offer that to the actors to sort of help us build and find their agency, like you said, uh, in terms of how they uh, create that particular moment. Um, it's kind of beats in the play, uh, if anyone's familiar with Thompson writes them, quote unquote, as beats um, towards going to the biggest bingo in the world. And, and it's uh, it's going to be very playful. It's going to be maybe grotesque, chaotic. I don't know. So like we're like we've got all these words associated with hopefully um, that we want to kind of offer to the actors as well and see what they do with them. Um, and in, inside that as well, the sound designer, like there's an original song to compose uh, with the cast. So we'll be doing that as well um, in the first, you know, well, we'll be working on it continuously, but definitely workshopping it in the first uh, week and so week into rehearsal and drawing upon the immense musical talents of the cast, uh, including Zach Running Coyote and Nicole Joy Frazier. Very exciting um, to have both of them and their musical talents uh, coming to us. So yes, um, you've hit on something. <laughs> I don't know if there's anything else you want to say about that. That's what's exciting, collaborative, collaborative work coming up. Shifting back a little bit, um... You kind of talked you, you spoke a bit about the music and the um the laughter and a bit about that that transition which will be a bit um joyous but also grotesque um and i i think that laughter and joy with these women in in the midst of all the tragedy and the stories which at times are very blunt and and shocking um 
how how do you think that that the laughter and the joy is important in this in this play? I mean, it's it's definitely you know you've heard I've heard you know so many great indigenous artists Thompson included you know um, speak about like, like laughter is medicine, um, and so that's sort of you know people uh, when they think of the Red Sisters, there's obviously um, laugh out loud moments potentially, especially but it's it's funny when I think about it, it's it's they're born out of tragedy. So they, they go hand in hand, the way that the women uh, speak to each other, sometimes it's shocking and, and the audience might laugh because of the language they use towards each other again, because they know each other so well. Um, but they're, it's just, they're so well, they're so well drawn, they're, they're real people. Um, so the way that they joke and pick at each other um, with humor um, is, is sort of a coping mechanism in some ways, um, because they are, are, they have all of them in different, each in different ways, um, been living um, with events in their lives that have really shaped um, and in some ways, um, you know, brutalized them. Like there's trauma uh, in the play, uh, certainly. Um, and so, you know, laughter is, is a language um, and obviously there's, you know, Thompson's really interested in that, right? Like he's, you know, written wonderful essays um, about, uh, you know, language and, and mythology. Um, there's Korean Ojibwe in the world, in the world of the play. Um, and he's sort of uh, asking us to think about that in terms of how language is culture um, and, and how precious that is. Um, we know that, you know, there's so many things that have been taken away. Um, from indigenous communities, um, and 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 it, at its heart, it's it's not being able to practice one's culture, and one's culture is about an interaction and sharing of of language, uh, including laughter. So so there, it's deeply tied um, into the world of the play. But I don't think of this play as a comedy. <laughs> so, and I think I've said that before in the prep. Like I, I think it's a drama um, with with funny moments, mm -hmm. um, and I think. Sometimes those funny moments are used like humor can be a weapon sometimes um, and and sometimes that is the case in this play um, but my my hope is if we we figure out the intentions character by character and we really we really work at the the text and and building of the world and the characters very deeply um, that you know the audience will laugh uh, maybe maybe in spite of maybe dis in discomfort maybe sometimes in agreement. Um, I think that's the beauty of Dawson's play. It's quite layered in that way. Yeah, it's beautiful. It also makes me think of too a little bit um, joy as a form of resistance. Um, and there's a big movement in, in the black community of black uh, joy as a form of resistance. And I think it's also applicable to um, indigenous um, presence within the Western culture of, of that there is joy and that seeing that joy is a form of, of resistance and a weapon not only within the the context of the play but in its mere existence absolutely and i think you know that comes also in the form of nanabush and um and and the potential that nanabush might bring back if we're able to see or like interact with nanabush again uh which is sort of pelagia's hope can you speak any more uh, uh, to so for our our listeners to nanabush is um the uh, trickster um, spirit sort of in the indigenous communities uh, in, in mythology and folklore. And um, they have a pretty um, big presence and, and uh, Thompson himself in the text says, you know, this is where I have them appearing, but really it's up to kind of the director or the, the, the production to put them in wherever they want. Um, can you speak a bit about um, the importance of Nan Bush and um, how you are inspired to kind of work with that character in this production. Um, definitely, I mean, I mean, for in many indigenous people, like Nan Bush is a spirit guide. Um, you know, has been sent to teach the Anishinaabe how to live, um, and for you know, even for Algonquin tribes, has the power to create life in others as well as impersonate it. What's really been important is to then really truly think about Nana Bush's journey and where he is concerned about the well being of the women and where he um, is in pain. And like Pelagia said herself, like where he 
um, is disconnected um, from the world, that he's disappearing himself um, or themselves and, and like what that might mean um, and what, uh, what it means when he's more fully formed. Uh, we've been talking a lot about like his, his journey as a pedestrian, um, his journey um, as a spirit. Um, yeah, and his journey uh, physically, I think, which will be interesting to work on with Zach um, in terms of how he manifests the cancers in the play that I think are, for me personally, um, really striking. Hopefully then we can also think about like, what is Nana Bush's role or, or otherwise like in 2021, you know, what's, what's that parallel? Um, and I just wanted to say, uh, when I was talking about Shaboon again, um, I was trying to remember the name of the young woman, but it's Helen Betty Osborne, I believe, who um, was from Manitoba um, that um, Thompson was paralleling um, in his storytelling there um, to give voice um, to her um, murder. Thank you. Thank you for, for saying her name. What do you hope that this piece will spark in audience members that may never have seen uh, Thompson Highway's work or um, seen Indigenous work. Um, what do you hope they will be inspired or the spark that they will move to um, or within them going from seeing this performance? And then also, um, once that is ignited in them, where would you recommend them to go next? My hope with encountering Thompson's work, whether it's their first time or, or you know, their fifth time um, in this particular play, because it's this particular moment with this particular group of people respond to it, um, is just, uh, like I said before, like how I think his play is about our, like, our questioning, are we really concerned with the true welfare of those around us? Um, and I think in terms of Indigenous communities, it's like, I hope people consider what has that looked like in the past and what might let that look like now. Um, and I think in that regard, you know, for hopefully wanting to read more of his work, um, you know, he's written novels, he's written essays, um, but there's, and I, my hope is that with Stratford, I, I know that they obviously are commissioning and working with other Indigenous artists, um, and that we see more Indigenous content on, uh, not just the Stratford stages, but more and more stages across the country. For me, it's, it's, uh, absolutely like the, you know, knowing the work of Thompson, but also the people who have come after Thompson. Um, and who have, you know, acknowledged the past and going forward into the future, uh, and not just playwrights, you know, there's just, you know, Billy Ray Core and like um, Alicia Elliott, like there's just, there's just so many great artists um, to know. Yeah, for the future work, actually, yeah, I think similar as Jess, um, I recently just realized there's a lot of Indigenous women making artwork in here in Vancouver but they've never made it into like a bigger, onto a bigger stage. I've um, joined um, a circle of women like pre-COVID, they sit around together um, every week to talk about themselves. They just talk about themselves. It was part of a, um, a artwork that uh, they were um, doing about um, homelessness, sexual abuse, and just like real experience of people and they sit together and they talk about themselves. And I feel like that is very powerful work that can, it should be heard by more people, but it, um, and there are more things like this in Vancouver, but they're all in very smaller scale and usually organized by indigenous community. And they've never made it onto a bigger platform. Um, I think, so I think, everyone could start small, like find those moments in the community and they could be just next door to you, those stories, they're everywhere. Yeah, that's, it's beautiful. It makes me, it really kind of perfectly ties it back because I, I said at the beginning, you know, this, this play um, is about the stories of, of the people around us and our community and how we listen to them and how we love them through pain and through joy. And I think that that's a great message to kind of say, go out there and, and keep your ears open and be open, as Jess said too, about Thompson's work, encouraging us to be open to the community and the stories around us. That's really beautiful. Thank you. So I would love to to make a cheers. Um, and what are we what are we cheersing to, Sophie and Jess? What are we cheersing to? Oh, gosh. I'm just gonna like Oaks and Thompson's play 
I wonder if anyone else has. Yes. I just like, I always do this. I love, I love quotes and I'm going to, I'm going to quote, quote Emily dictionary and say big floppy ears to the door. So I'm going to cheers to that. Big floppy cheers ears to the, to the door. door. Sophie, just cheers. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today. It was really a wonderful conversation and it's really gotten me excited about the future of this play and this production and um, diving deeper into the Indigenous works around me. So thank you so much for joining me, Jess and Sophie. Please join us and check out the other available episodes of Show Starters. Thank you so much. Cheers. <laughs>